Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and along with my husband, Chris, this is our journey channel where we show the behind the scenes of Ginger Chick Rehab where we're usually flipping items, making items over, painting items, showing you how to restore items. But here on this channel, we share the process of going to auctions, thrift stores, antique stores, buying not only to decorate our own home with, buying items to resell in our antique booth and on eBay. So today's video is Chris works a nine to five job. We're going to call it a nine to five job. <laughs> it's a lot more than that, but he works during the week. So weekly auctions are usually out of the question for him unless he takes a vacation day. So a local auctioneer that we go to a lot on Saturdays that usually has some very good things that we find to buy and resell and flip and all that just happened to have another auction at a house, which was the second auction. We missed out on the first auction um, of some really goods that we thought we would like to try to bid on and see if we could get. So I'm going to share that haul with you along with another haul of a auction that we had been looking forward to um, that I knew it had some wonderful antiques that I knew I was probably going to have to pay up on. I was hoping I didn't have to pay up on, but uh, you know, it's just how it goes when you're looking for items to decorate your home with, fill your collections, or just to resell. So let's get to this. So with this auction, I didn't film a lot pre one because you saw it was snowing. What happened to spring? I have no idea. That's just how the weather goes in Michigan. But this household, they were into. Casino, gambling, roulette wheel, bar memorabilia, bar, a ton of bar memorabilia, and a lot of adult content. Well, <laughs> so, a brothel. Well, yeah. Anyway, we were not, I'm not filming that at all. I don't want to get demonetized for that. But there were other treasures there that we were willing to bid on. So as a collector and a reseller, they there were some good things for us to be drawn into. But also their daily job, they were they owned a jewelry store. So I'm, I, they're going to have one more auction. I'm, I'm going to try to get back to that one, even if Chris can't go. So we'll, we'll see how that goes if I make it or if I miss out on it. But anyway, so the, one of the first things that I got, or one of the things that I got was this huge Santa and the Santa was his, his little legs are weighted. Um, he was their store display, so he was given to them or they purchased him from another, like a jewelry distributor to display in the store. So I thought he was really, really cool. And then, you know, and being that close Christmas, people aren't really still thinking of Christmas. So I, I feel like I got to get a deal on him. So I don't know if these sell, they don't sell. I've never got my hands on a doctor's bag. But what intrigued me is it still had the key to it. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if it's something that resells or people collect or not, but it, it was minimal. This will be a project piece. <laughs> a project piece. Nobody wanted the project piece of the broken mirror. It just needs to be re-glued back on, you know, reattached. I, I, don't, I love a good project piece. I don't get to get a lot of project pieces from auctions, but... Look at this amazing, out of all the like random things that they had, that's why I thought I want to go to the house one because I'm like, oh, look at the dobo that they had. That patina is amazing. Nothing to have to do to this piece at all. Well, it's funny because at the auction they had, I would say 75% of it was casino stuff. I mean, they had tons of boxes. These are just some of the better ones that we kept, but we ended up with like, get close. we ended up with like 15 roulette wheels that uh, are made out of plastic and stuff. Uh, they had blackjack, bingo, I mean, everything. So they, they like to play their games. It is funny to find really nice, clean antiques like the crock behind you. Beautiful. In with that hodgepodge with, of everything else. Yeah, yeah so you're finding these, these, really, these really old antiques in a building that was their like casino roof. I, I I always say that I love like kind of finding the history of who we're buying from. Now this was a living estate. I believe the husband had passed, but the wife was still living. 
So I thought this was cool in one of the boxes I bid on. It says Lotto, but look at the little letters. I don't know why this is in there. I don't know anything about this little game, so there's little boards, but it was called Lotto. The box is amazing. The graphics is just amazing on this. And, and again, the, another really nice antique tin. Yeah, though it's not a marshmallow jar or a marshmallow tin that I collect, I thought this graphics is beautiful. The color reminds me of the that sweet potato that I just did. Maybe a little lighter, but or that. butterscotch. Or, or yeah, butterscotch or butterscotch. Now I've never been able to get my hands on an old vintage bingo. This is I'm going to keep for myself. I don't know if all the numbers, the ball 35 um, are there or not. It did come with the bingo cards. I'm probably going to use it in some type of display. You know, that's what we do. We buy stuff to decorate our own house with. They just look yeah. cool. Yeah. And these were just a box of random numbers. And I am a sucker for price tags, numbers, register tags. Um, so there was just a whole bunch. They also collected cigar and pipe and all that kind of stuff. They so they look like they might go around one. Yeah, I wondered if like that was I don't know because I don't know it was. There was something on the back, but I don't have my glasses on. Oh my gosh! Yes. I see Ohio. I cannot. Mount yeah. something. Neither of us have our glasses on, so not that we're readers on to read that. Now these are pretty. I love rusty, crusty, old aged metal, and I guess what these are are from like the nineteen twenties. They would have been the cigar wrapper, like what they would print with. That's backwards. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, Brown's Mule and Days of Work. Or oh, here, I could do it this way. It'll be right for you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Crazy. And then talk about some more, some more random numbers. Just five cents, and I can use these in little vignettes and some old... Even though, yes, we could make these, it is nice to have the little vintage ones. Very, I don't know what these tags went to, why they had tags, I don't know. An old slate board that opened like a book. I've had them separated, but I've never had one bound and then that you could open. Oh, that is so cool. Some cast iron. Talk about random bar stuff. <laughs> this is... Look at his horns. I just love this bull's horns. Very cool piece. He And super heavy cast iron. Holy cow. And then a cast iron frog. And then a random cast iron frog. They had, um, I did take a picture of that one. They had an amazing bronze patinaed elephant, but it went skyrocket and I'm glad that I would have been afraid because tusks always make me, like horns make me nervous that they're going, even metals get broken off so this is a mgm walking lion um some kind of a statue maybe i think they went to the casinos a lot in nevada um but he needs to be re-glued on there so beautiful lion and since he wasn't glued nobody really wanted him so i'm like i can reattach him so let's get down and personal on the table so they had a cast iron bird bath beautiful piece those are always good sellers. I seltzer bottles. Look at the uniqueness of that one. A little bird on the mouth. Oh my gosh! And then the detail, that nice green blue color was beautiful. Um, this was in their bar, and I'm like, this looks like McCoy, and it is. When I Google lensed it, this is McCoy. It doesn't sell for a terrible lot. You can tell it was like used for a planter. It's not. Like, doesn't say McCoy, but when I Google lens it, it is. Look at this beautiful piece. Chris, oh, no, the, the rooster too. <laughs> I just, ah, uh, that patina is awesome. He is a fun little piece. Jars. And then some milk glass spice jars in a set with some rusty crusty lids, which is great patina. It's a cast iron mirror, vanity mirror. It actually swivels both ways. It stays up better if it's this way. Um, needs to be tightened a little bit, but it's a pretty cool piece. I love these little bird prints. 
Though I'm not sure why they have thorns. I'm going to call them thorns. Well, they're, they're like the tacks that you would use for uh, attaching a window. Yeah, I don't know why those are, are how, what was the, what were they on, but I thought the graphics and the age of the pictures were beautiful. I think one has a little damage on it. Well, one, it looks like somebody tried to draw the bird again. Oh, well, that's interesting. But they were minimal, so not terrible. Talk about the roulette wheels. Look at the graphics. So when I Google Lens this one, it said it was from the 1900s, the early 1900s. Um, just a beautiful horse. Horse race roulette wheel game. Can I tell you if all the pieces are there? I, I don't know, but I just thought the graphics, if you are a Kentucky Derby, you're a horse racer, you're, you're a gambler like they are, it was still in the box. It was beautiful. It was there is something on there. Sand down. Sand down. Um, I can't read that. But anyway, pretty a pretty cool piece, especially since it was still in the box. Bingo. Bingo. Yeah, you know, I'm a sucker. I only usually pick up the black cards, and that's what I was looking for was the black cards. The little numbers are still in, though. Those are still fun to do things with. Oh, just a fun little bingo game. A beautiful globe. A stand globe. I, I'm attracted to globes, especially any age. Um, older, of course, is better. And then this one was on a stand. And I know you can see this big, beautiful piece. And I paid a lot for this piece, y'all. I know you're going to ask. So I paid 600 for this piece. But the last metal mail pouch sign that was about this size sold for... So I can screenshot that. I can share it with you, the prices. But no, I'm not keeping it. I'm reselling it. It'll look beautiful in our booth. Probably put probably about 1500 and see how it resells. It's a large piece. It's going to take up a lot of wall space. But I know that these are highly collectible. And I could tell by having to bid on it. Yeah. And it has a nice frame. Somebody had framed it. A lot of times you'll find these on old barns and stuff. And that's probably why it has these huge nail holes. When they pull it off, though, they'll ruin it. So it was kind of nice that... It was still in good shape and they mounted it onto a board. You can always take that off if you do want to mount it onto a barn, but then it's a hanging system, so you could actually change it around wherever you want to put it. Yeah, so I don't know. Chris got that hardware sign to test out to see how signage goes, because signage goes for good money at auctions. <laughs> did we buy a broken down register, old time register? Yes, we did. We did, and you all know why I did. Because I want those, I want those in there. Now I would not buy a perfect, pristine, condition one ever just to take the numbers out, but this is a huge project piece for Chris to get the pieces and parts. Even these are collectible. Um, it's heavy, oh, it's heavy. He hasn't managed to be able to get the drawer open yet. No, it's He's missing gotta unscrew. key to unlock everything. So, so in the days they would have had a key, it's right here. You can still see part of it. Like somebody tried to wedge it out to unlock it. So that way you could actually function the keyboard. And then when you were done for the day, you'd lock it up. Because this thing weighs, it's it's got to go close to 100 pounds, just like this. And it had more parts to it. And there was a metal base that it set on that probably was 50 more pounds. So no one's going to just walk out the store with it. So if you lock it down like you'd lock your car outside. Oh, Okay, what do y'all think? I don't know anything about artwork. All I know is this piece was beautiful. Horse racing jockeys. It is numbered. Beautiful frame. There is a little bit of damage here on the frame. Show the back of it. Unfortunately, it's been wooded on the back, so you can't see like if there's a detail or signatures or anything like that. So during the auction... The auctioneer stated that the the lady, there is a little bit of wording right there, the lady had taken it to the antique road show and they appraised it at $4,000, though there's no paperwork. I can't, other than find an artist, uh, uh, a number, I have to do a little bit more research on it. I don't know anything about artwork. Nothing, nothing about artwork. So we just did just notice a little bit of wording. Um, 
on that. So we'll have to see if we can make out that wording a lot more. It's so hard, it's so aged that, anyway. Along with it. And then there was this beautiful scene. Also, that was the frames. Why did we stop making these beautiful frames? Of course, the frames got, you know, damaged. And that's not damaged, but this is damaged. But you got that beautiful artwork, hand-painted sign. This one is signed, 1975. Mm -hmm. The other one, I don't see the signature on the front. So just a beautiful no, painted either. canvas piece. Cowboy style. <laughs> spurs, spurs. More. I do. More roulette wheel, gambling, poker. The inside of a slot machine, which I thought was, you know, we love salvage finds. And just random weird pieces. Oh, look at this kaleidoscope. I have a smaller kaleidoscope like this that's brass. I, it's a two-piece, so you can not only see the different shapes, but you can see different colors with it. I don't know. You yeah, can't you can't. You can't <laughs> it's hard to see in a farmhouse. See, random farmhouse sign. <laughs> These antiques. You get just some old dice that I pulled out because they're fun. More dice. More dice. Baby, more dice. baby, baby dice. Yes. Oh, this dice. But look at this. Dice in a little leather, dice in a little leather pouch. Yeah. That are black or green, I'm not sure. You Maybe to faded too. Anybody remember these? <laughs> these from your childhood? I remember these from our childhood. You get them in a gumball machine. Um, it was There's... folded, so I was hoping it was going to flat, flatten it out. Which is so funny. So, like, it would tell you your fortune if it moved its head or its tail or just its tail or its head. Oh, my gosh. So, Chris, it's moving just its head. So, Chris has jealousy going on. And is that not too funny? I do. <laughs> jealousy of what? Who knows? Oh, those were just, those were fun little dime store. Novelty things. Yes. Well, our motivation for going Chris has a love of these banister cabinets. This one is beautiful. Nothing he needs to do to it. Just a clean job. Just, yeah, just dust it, clean it. And for some reason, nobody wanted it, so he got a great deal. And we might keep this piece. Yeah. I think, I told him I thought it would be a better display for his vintage metal trucks and toys and tankas and Buddy she did else. give me a spot to put them for like three months, so that was pretty impressive. <laughs> I think this would be free. Those are two of his loves. He loves these cabinets. Absolutely loves these cabinets. And then he has a smaller one that he could be doing the same thing with. Cask, this rocket, that's heavy. What is it, 20 pounds? Oh, yeah. It is I mean, it's solid. It is a There's solid no cast iron rocking horse. I'm sucker for horses. And then just a random... Decorative plane. These little planes do sell for me. So, so Chris did score something amazing, though it's not the Buzzed Weiser Clydesdale mirror. He has now decided that he is into lights, and they had so much. They would pick up whatever bar mirror didn't matter who the sponsor was. But Chris got this for a great deal. 125? 125. 125. So he was a very happy person. He's going to be able to display it in his bar area. It is an amazing shape. Usually something would be cracked, something would be broken. Or missing parts. Missing parts, yes, but still worked. And then he got one. Okay. So also I was able to get this. Uh, it's just a sign that would have actually hung on the side of a building or in a bar. Uh, it's tin. It's probably 70s, so it's not extremely old. 60s, maybe. It's vintage. Um, it's only single-sided. But until I do get the Clydesdale mirror, I'll probably put it out here next to my bar area with the Clydesdale light-up. Yeah, saw this above it. space here, he's going to hang that from above there. Maybe I'll be able to add it into the video. That's what we walk home with for Katie. Well, th this was in a box of some of the roulette wheels we're gonna send most of it to auction you know it takes time to list and they were so, into roulette 
So it was just something that they were into. They collected just like Chris collecting and I collecting. We all we all like to collect something. So sometimes we can't deal with everything. Chris did get a box of watches, though they're new. None of them are probably gold or anything like that. So I don't, I'm not sure. Probably send those to auction. I'll probably take them to the local pawn shop first, first to the local jewelry store. Uh, one of the girls that works there, she graduated with me. She'll give me an honest opinion of them. And if they're not worth anything, yeah, they'll just go straight to auction and uh, somebody will like them. I mean, they are brand new, still in box watches. I don't know if they work or not, but there's quite a few of them. Don't you have anything better? Did we just see you yesterday? Yeah. You know it's going to be a high-end auction when they rent a space out and they have it all labeled and they have papers that they hand you and they give you the word you know what it is oh but it was just some beautiful items so many that i wanted but you know price it's always about money it doesn't always just go about money but yeah so there are a few items that i I'm, I'm going to extremely yeah i guess you'd say chris would say extremely not give up on like these sheep love those sheep but this folk art stuff goes really really high a lot of it is german made a lot of it is paper mache holy cow i think one of the pieces went for almost if not four thousand dollars So second auction, my car is kind of full. Our garage is kind of full. Um, yeah, do you want, I'll just have Chris grab pieces out on the back of my vehicle because we need to get this stuff taken care of because at this moment I'm filming this, we are hosting Easter next week and I keep, we keep filling up our garage, so. Yeah, this is Sunday. This is Sunday now, so this is the day that we go through all of the stuff from the antiques or from the auctions. Usually it's only a Saturday auction, so we'll go through, price everything, see what needs to go into the booth. And now we've got double the load because we went to a Friday-Saturday auction. So I'll start pulling things out to show you what we got at this. Ivan was able to score at the auction not only one, but... Two very and i would say antique on this one not just vintage rocking horses oh look at them you all i could not help myself 
I don't even know if I knew. I knew this one was there. Yeah. This I, one I did not see in the pictures either. Yeah, I didn't see that one in the pictures. They told me they have some more coming. Well, I know horses aren't necessarily fast-selling items. They do have a good price tag on them. Luckily, now we have a space to put them in our booth. They're gorgeous. They're old. So they'll just sit there and make our booth look pretty until somebody's ready to buy them, I guess. Swans definitely sell faster than the horses do. That's for sure. So even though we done we had done two days of auctions, when we are in a new area going to an auction, we will Google where the antique stores, where the secondhand stores were, Goodwill, anything like that. And we will hit a few, which makes for a very long day on our way home. That's just part of being a reseller. You always need inventory. You need fresh stock. You need, you're always looking for the things that you collect or that you know that your buyers collect or just those odd items in random antique stores, random thrift stores. You just never know what you're going to find. So I feel like we're just selling out of the back car right now this is kind of funny okay so a couple things at the auction that i wanted and i was able to score is a couple of the vintage paper mache pumpkins what i went for and did not want to leave without were these vintage sheep i collect these i resell some of these i'll upgrade some of mine It's funny because the first one that I ever got, I got at a garage sale for $3. And then from there on, I've been on the hunt for these little sheep. Oh, so I will upgrade some of the sheep that I have that I bought at a folk art auction with a lady made them. And I will sell some of them, but I paid very good money for these for what? Probably between the two, I paid $6.25. So I had to fight for them. And there were multiple bidders wanting the, that I don't see them. I don't see them at auctions. I don't see them at sales, antique stores. I, I don't, those are not something I see in people's Instagram posts of how they collect them. Well, this second auction that we went to on Saturday was a high-end auction too. We really went there thinking we're not going to be able to get anything. It was just going to be fun to get some knowledge and stuff on it. And to be able to score some of the stuff was nice. But there were folk art Santa Clauses. And we started writing down some numbers on them because they did a very good job of describing what the product was so we can look them up. Because some of them went for $4,000 for a little paper mache Santa Claus. German made, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Chris was impressed that things that were paper mache would go so high. But it's a craft. Paper mache is definitely a craft. Folk art is highly collectible and goes for, wow, does it go for money. This auction house did do shipping also, so they did some online. They didn't do a live auction. They just did pre-bidding. Um, so there was that. So you had to bid against people that already had a dollar amount in their head of what they would pay for stuff. Every auction's ran a little bit different. And then somehow I started collecting these darn little... Um, cast iron pigs. This is my third one. But he was in a lot of toys. Yeah, so I just I just wanted the. We got pit. the train set cars, an old sweeper, and then some plastic Army. Indian and yeah. cowboys. And I'll probably send those to auction. You know, when you're when you're thinking about reselling one, eBay takes a lot of time to research and list, and then. Space is valuable in our booth, so you want to flip things that you feel will sell a little bit faster. I don't know much about any of the toy stuff, so we'll just send it on to auction. Another antique or reseller or collector can buy it at the auction. At one of the antique stores, though, I know it's a chamber pot, but I love this size of chamber pot myself to collect. I have a chamber pot that I ran across that is cracked. Um, that has the handle, so I'm going to change it out and use it in my own decor. 
I don't know if these really, how often they really resell anyway, but I love the shape of this. I love how tall they are. And it was priced right. And it was priced very good. It was a booth that I, I think I videoed a little bit. It was a booth that um, we could have been friends or we couldn't be friends at the same auction because we'd be buying the same stuff, but they had jadeite, they had ironstone, and most of it was priced where I would price it at. There's so music playing in the background, so I have to do a voiceover, but see, look at all the stuff I love to buy, <laughs> and some of it I love to collect. Very nice booth. This was right in the Grand Ledge area, Grand Ledge, Michigan. I, I think it was salvaged antiques, maybe? I can't remember the name right offhand, because we just, we go to so many antique stores, but all that yummy ironstone in one place, and then of course, butter pats, but we're priced like they should be priced for resale. I couldn't buy a lot, and then Chris noticed this one on the ground that I didn't see actually earlier. I was like, oh yeah, I have a handle I could replace that with. Well, most of the booths were having some kind of a sale because most of them were 10 to 20, some were at 50% off. Just like this uh, Big Ben clock. Uh, Yvonne collects these and... I, cl I have too many collections. I she think. collects a lot of things. But this one, uh, I think I it was love that $20 shape. and then it was 20% off. So that was a really good buy for her. That's one of, this is one of my favorite shapes, these metal ones. I love these metals. They just that had that old timey retro and that industrial vibe. And then I was able to co score a couple ironstone plates. I'm trying to change out my little display for some bigger plates. And I really want them to say the ironstone. I mean, it's just the fun of the hunt. They don't have to say it, but I really want them to say just because you can see that side of the, of the plate. So we stopped at a antique store. Mm -hmm. A gentleman at the auction told us about where his booth was antique store, so we had never been to Lake Odessa, so we thought we would check that out. And that's not where we were going. We were going to go the other way. Yes. Yeah, we were going to go back to Mason, where I love those antique stores. If you're ever in the Mason, Michigan area, they have some mm -hmm. yummy antique stores. I probably shouldn't tell that to everybody, but <laughs> I'm not there every week. They change out all the time, so... Anyway, I saw this coffee tin. I thought it was gorgeous. The patina is gorgeous. The writing is gorgeous. This would be fun to put like vintage um, kitchen utensils in. I love these mesh primitive cloches. Um, so I actually reselled. So this was that was a good deal. I found another little mini butter cookie press and. A really good score. A there. really good score. Ten dollars score. $10 I think ten dollars score. Twenty percent off. Oh yeah. So even better score on a. I I I don't know if these are Perkins or they're well buckets or sugar buckets. Sugar buckets. It's newer. It's not old, but these ones are nice to paint up um, and put florals in. Yeah. So another reason that we went that <laughs> went to this auction that I knew was going to be higher end. Did you see the collection? of vintage molds, chocolate molds, ice cream molds. Um, I, I do have a few buyers. I like to display them myself, collect them. Um, they are gorgeous. Just, I am attracted to old aged metal. Nothing, there's just, so I was able to score, um, and they were, some of them were going high, y'all. Um, bunnies just tons of bunnies oh my gosh they were so cool so we have some bunnies i've never had this size never have i had this big i think i had a santa claus maybe half the size of this once maybe but two bunnies and then this one is a whole bag so and i think there's actually a chicken a rooster hen in this one Oh yes, so this this one's a little bent up. We'll have to maybe do a project, or maybe, I don't know how that went together. Or if it's just plain and simply bent up, and you just sell the two pieces like this, just to put in your decor, because it, you can tell that they've been, they've been hurt. <laughs> bent, cool decor pieces though, oh my gosh. 
amazing. Apparently this one is a bell. No, a basket. A basket, a little basket. But it had a large bunny in it. Another little bunny. They had a bunny with a... A shotgun. Yeah. It was the bunny hunting. That was a weird one. Oh, and then another a couple. Yeah, these are just halves of them. So a couple more little chicken on a basket. So that was that was neat. So something that was unexpected that you didn't notice or you weren't planning on getting regardless were, was this item. And it might have been two that you had said, well, I've got a few of these still that didn't sell over Christmas. <laughs> yeah, so... But ceramic tree, even though it's not in the season, so people weren't really bidding on them, and they sold these two as a pair. As a pair. So they are vintage, they're in mint condition, they have their bulbs. And you got a really good price on them. And I got a really good price on them. So now, these were at the end of the auction too, and a lot of people were there for the glassware, and they were picking up other things too, but they had all left as soon as the glassware was done. So it's even if you're not buying anything or you have not bought anything, stay to the end if you can because that's a lot of times where the deals are at the end. Of, I, I don't, very few auctions do we ever leave early. We usually always will stay to the end of an auction because there's some great scores at the end. Well, I think that milk pouch was one of the last things to be sold Yeah, the, the milk, the mail pouch one, even though I paid 600 for it, there was only eight of us left bidding, so it was cold, it was long, and somebody may have wanted to bid on it, but they left. So that's I I knew it was going to go for good money. So now we're going to spend the day pricing, deciding what we're going to put in our booth, what we're going to list on eBay, what I'm going to put in my own home for home decor. So. That is just the life of a reseller. And as you see, I always said, like, we're tough. I, I had somebody comment on my um, social media post that, yeah, not only have I been into a blizzard during an auction, but I went during a thunderstorm and we still, <laughs> we still, I don't know, you gotta have, uh, I, if it was lightning, I'd hope they would call it a little bit, <laughs> bit a little bit of rain, you know, we'll dry, you know. Anyway, so thanks for watching today's haul video. Um, let me know what the favorite item that we found out and about. Searching, hunting, thrifting adventure weekend, it, it definitely was. So, again, thanks for watching. We will see you next time, and you can see what we're up to. Bye. Bye.